For a year now, we have been working on the Dual Rule project, where we are co-writing a book and through videos and live streams, sharing and getting help from our audience every step of the way. If you haven't been here since the beginning, but you're interested in following along, you might find it hard to keep up because there's a lot of footage to go through if you're going to watch all the videos and all the live streams after the fact. We are here to help you with that. This video will be a run through of the entire project so far with all the information you need to know in order to follow along from now on. I've also started editing all our live streams from last year where we planned and plotted and world built for this story. And every Sunday from now until I run out of content, I will be putting up shorter clips from these live streams. So instead of sitting through two to four hour long replays of live streams where we go off on tangents and talk other stuff with a chat every once in a while, you'll get the relevant information in a more condensed form. I'll try to make sure each video covers one topic too, so if you're extra interested in how we created the religion, you'll be able to find all the information about that without having to go through all of the videos. Of course, we didn't stick to one topic at all times. <laughs> We might talk briefly about religion while we're also talking about how we created a certain character or something. But again, I am trying to make these videos as accessible as possible. You will also find links down below in the description to all the documents we're sharing. A link to World Anvil with all the information we've gathered there about this world. And we are of course also more than happy to answer any questions you might have about this project and the process. So if you feel like there's information you want or is curious about that we haven't shared, feel free to ask on this video, on other videos, or during the live streams. We also have a Discord that's linked down below where you can reach out with whatever you want. Now for the recap of the dual rule so far. For NaNoWriMo 2020, me and Bug, a friend of ours, wrote a story in November that we plotted together in live streams with audience participation, which was a lot of fun. And in the beginning of 2021, Marcus and I had the idea that we wanted to do something similar, we wanted to co-write something. Around the same time, I was getting frustrated about being so careful about sharing spoilers of my stories. One thing led to another, and here we are. Again, I will be putting up summaries of the live streams we did for anyone who's curious about the process, but what we eventually came up with was the concept of the Dual Rule Project. The elevator pitch for this project is as follows. A shapeshifter and an archivist, neither with a claim to the throne, get thrust into a magical quest to become the next heirs, whether they or the current ruler wants them to or not. The world is called Asima, and this is the map of it. This continent is entirely isolated from the rest of the world, and the people living here aren't even aware that there is a rest of the world. On the large island live humans, and on the smaller islands live shapeshifters, who were driven from the human land about 200 years ago, at the time of our story. Shapeshifters have a human form and can shift into any kind of animal as long as they've touched an animal of that kind. They can shift into hundreds of different forms, they can't keep that many in their memory, so to speak, but most shapeshifters have maybe three to five different animals they can turn into. They can learn new forms, new animals, if they forget one of the old ones, basically. The shapeshifters can communicate telepathically, both in their human forms and animal forms. The ruler of Asima, or over the human part of it, has magical powers. No one else does except the heir. Shapeshifting and telepathy does not count as magic in this context. The way this power works is that the heir to the throne wakes up one morning with a power. A specific power. The current ruler can create illusions, someone could predict the weather, our characters have healing and seeing in the dark, respectively. This power is a sign that they have to go on a quest, where they have a limited amount of time, we currently said two months, that might change, to complete seven trials, one for each element. The elements are air, earth, electricity, fire, metal, plants, and water. These are also the gods of this world, one god for each element. As the air manages the trials, they gain power over these elements. When they've done the air trial, they can manipulate air and so on. If they fail either of the trials, they die. If they don't manage the entire quest in time, they also die. And whenever and however they do die, if they do, the next person in line wakes up with a magical power. A different one. Each person gets their own power. Then this person has to go on the quest and so on until someone manages that someone becomes the next ruler. Either immediately if the current ruler steps down or is defeated in a challenge, 
or when the current ruler dies if the heir decides to wait that out. What the people don't know is that it's not just one person who is supposed to do this quest. It's not just someone related to the current ruler, but there's also someone else, a commoner. The point is that these two people should both do the quest, both gain the powers, and then rule together. A dual rule. But for centuries, the priests and other powerful people around the royal family has made sure that only the royal heir makes it through the trials. This began centuries ago when one of the rulers at the time betrayed their co-ruler, murdered them, sank a city to erase all memory that there ever was two rulers, and basically made sure that their own family would always be the one on the throne. As for our story, the characters are Lid, who is the shapeshifter, and Niam, who is the archivist. Lid lives on these islands with her family, and one of her mothers is the younger sister of the current ruler of the human land. So the mother is a human, and she ran away from the shapeshifters years ago because of reasons not super important right now. Niam lives in Elysi, which is the capital of Asima. He is human, and an archivist. Very important. The story begins with both Lid and Niam waking up with magical powers. Lid has the ability to heal people, and Niam the ability to see in the dark. Or rather, his vision has been inverted. So he suddenly perceives light as darkness, and darkness as light. So he sees in the dark, but not in the light. Now, Lid is the adopted daughter of the ruler's sister, but she wasn't supposed to get this magic, they thought, because she's not blood-related to the royal family. Niam is an orphan. Maybe. That's what we said originally, but we might end up changing that. Either way, he is 100% sure that he's not related to a ruler at all. So that is, if possible, even more confusing. When Lid leaves for the quest, she is somewhat prepared. Her mother has been able to tell her a bit about what to expect about the quest, although of course Lid has the added complication of being a shapeshifter, and thus universally hated and feared on the mainland. Niam, on the other hand, is an archivist, which is a profession that's pretty highly regarded, but he doesn't leave with any preparation. The way he realizes that he can see in the dark is that a friend of his sort of points it out. This friend then turns around and betrays him to the royal guard, which he doesn't know, he just knows that the guard shows up. He escapes and leaves the city. Now we're just going to do a bit of overarching plot points, because this video will be way too long if we try to do this in detail. Lid and her best friend Tev get to the mainland, travel to this mountain where Lid does the metal trial. They then end up here in Infernal Valley, where she does the plant, fire, and ground trials. She does them all in one go, which is very effective and highly dangerous and also pretty awful. During these trials, though, she loses Tev. She believes that she's died because she has hallucinated his dead body, thank you, poisonous plants, and now things just kind of suck for her. Niam's journey starts, like I said before, with being utterly unprepared outside the city. He goes to a wayhouse, which is a place run by priests where travelers can get free food, buy supplies, and stay at their campsites. Niam has some food, buys what little supplies he can, and then has to run because the royal guard are coming. Unbeknownst to Niam, the priests in the wayhouse have understood who he is and are very keen on stopping him from performing this quest. There is a storm, Niam ends up by a lake, where he literally runs into a royal guard who falls into the water. Niam saves this guard and then runs away. He meets some kind strangers in the forest, gets some cryptic advice, finds out that he has air powers, because the saving of the guard was his air trial, and continues on with his journey. <laughs> he goes north and ends up in Inferno Valley, where he does his ground trial, and then the fire trial, and then the plant trial. On three consecutive days. He's not as effective as Lid is. He's then stuck in the valley for a while because he's badly injured, but luckily he runs into some natives of the valley who are willing to help him. When Lid is done with the trials in Inferno Valley, again, she's utterly lost and alone, but with little choice in the matter, she keeps going. She leaves Inferno Valley, finds a way house where she meets a nice person, gets some food, and stays for the night. The day after, she comes across a young woman who is being accosted by guards. Lid decides to help out and is invited to this woman's home. She learns about the hardships this woman and her neighbors are going through, and is a bit shocked at the stark difference between how these people live and her own life with the shapeshifters. Not only because the shapeshifters aren't bothered by guards or have to pay outrageous taxes to the ruler, but also because if shapeshifters are struggling, 
they help each other out. Whereas these people live more under the device of every man for themselves. The valley where this woman lives is struggling because their mill broke down and no one has fixed it. So Lid rallies the people together and helps them to fix it so they can mill their grain again and teaches them that they are stronger together than apart. This is her air trial and the day after she has gained her air powers. When Liam leaves in front of Ali, he goes to the metal mountain. He falls into a trap and is captured by guards but manages to escape and then does his metal trial. During his metal trial, he meets a dragon who accompanies him after this. The dragon is Ted. Ted is not dead. In the meantime, Lyd gets to Northport, which is the second largest city in the country. There she gets pickpocketed, which is kind of the last drop for her on top of all the other hardships she's gone through, and now she's basically completely lost at what to do. No money, no supplies, no Tev, nothing. She finds a temple and goes in, which is a bad idea, because the priests there realizes that she's a shapeshifter and calls for the guards. Lid very narrowly escapes this commotion after shifting into a bird and getting shot in the wing. Since she can't fly anymore, she shifts back to her human form and runs around calling for help telepathically. Luckily for her, another shapeshifter hears her and saves her at the last minute. This shapeshifter takes care of her severely injured arm, gives her some supplies, and then sends her on her way. She gets to the Mountain of Lightning, where she manages her lightning trial, surprisingly enough, despite at this point having a severe infection in her arm, causing her lots of pain, fever, general badness. Meanwhile, Neum also heads north towards the Mountain of Lightning. On the way, though, he gets sick because he's out in a rainstorm and has to stay in an abandoned village while Tev, still as a dragon, takes care of him. But a dragon flying around attracts attention, and some people from nearby villages come to try to kill the dragon. Because dragons are bad, potentially they are a sign that the gods are dying, which, you know, is probably not a great thing. But Neum and Tev escape, and they get to the Mountain of Lightning, where Neum does the electricity trial and finds Lid, who is there, injured and very bad off. And that is as far as we've gotten so far. Again, very quick run through, just a basic overview where I didn't even mention Bodhi, who is Neum's pet Pharyx, and adorable and clearly the most important character in the entire story. Upcoming videos will give you more. They will give you all the details that we have shared about this story. Which is everything. We have been sharing pretty much every step of the process with our audience. Every month we each make a recap video where we talk about what we've done since last month, and we also do a live stream where we talk through and solve any and all problems that might have come up. It can be problems with the plot, the world building, or with one or both of us feeling stuck. Really anything at all. We usually also talk about a lot of other things, see for example melon temples. They're generally just very nice and entertaining streams to be a part of. We plotted and planned in February and March last year, and we focused on the first part of the story up to the point where they actually meet. In April we started writing that first part, and then we did a pass and rewrote and edited them before swapping and reading each other's parts. That's what we've just finished, and now it's time to plot the next part of the story. We'll be doing that in February, in live streams as usual. In the meantime, we have a plan to combine our parts into one document and fix some of the largest discrepancies that came from the fact that we didn't coordinate a lot of details before or while writing our parts. But we did it like that on purpose, because we wanted to start writing and not plot and plan for eternity. <laughs> and we wanted to be able to write each at our own pace and not have to sit side by side and coordinate every little detail as we went along. We thought it would work better for us to fix things in post instead, and that's what we're going to do now. So that's the plan for February, although we're not putting too much pressure on ourselves to do the fixing, because I don't like doing that, and I don't want to put too much pressure on myself and overwhelm myself more than I have to be. So we're going to take it a little easy, because we do want this process to be at least mostly enjoyable for both of us. Mostly. <laughs> mostly. As mentioned, every Sunday from now on we'll offer a video with more detail on the story and above all, the process of going from nothing to a story idea to a world and a plot and hopefully eventually a finished story. We hope you're looking forward to it and that you will join us in future live streams because the more people that are involved in this, the more fun it is and the better the story becomes. At least that's how it's been so far. Thank you for watching, be safe, I'll see you next time.
fire, metal, plants, and water. <laughs> she learns about the hardships of this woman. <laughs> this one bat. <laughs> Liam has some food, buys what little surprise. Lid very narrowly escapes after shifting into a bird and get then dip a diglumbagam bump. She explodes. She explodes. Then the neck. And in the beginning I didn't scroll in far enough. In the beginning, I didn't scroll far enough. <laughs>